Tonight's stories. Upset. With updates. With updates. And more updates. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with... Rando. (laughs) Jazz. Sam. We're going to start our story off with this one from r slash comfort level pod and it is am i the asshole for being upset with my eldest son no i'm gonna say no right now okay sam can't say anything because he read it okay <laughs> boo <laughs> cheater brandy knows a little bit about it i know a little bit so i can't say anything okay about. we'll go with it <laughs> it was that big and it was that big that we were kind of asking a little bit about it so really sam heard about it first me and brandon know a little bit so okay. you're going in blind. So fresh we get to live eyes, fresh eyes. Through you. I'm going in. What's partially visually impaired. Visually impaired. <laughs> you're going in with glasses. Like yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> Am I the asshole for being upset with my eldest son? I only need parents' point of view on this because they're the only ones who understand me at this point. I haven't always been the best father, and I regret that every day. I had my eldest son, Nick, male 23, when my ex and I were 15. We both didn't have a good relationship with our parents, and that unfortunately meant that we both turned to alcohol and drugs. And as much as it breaks my heart, we would often neglect Nick. That meant that Nick would be left to raise his younger siblings and had to pick up the slack. I'm not defending my less than stellar behavior, but I was a wreck after my breakup with my ex. I was drinking every day and night. I could barely function. But a few months ago, I picked up my act. I've been sober for nearly 11 months, lost 67 pounds, got a better job, and finally got my high school diploma. Today was my birthday and marked the day for my 11 months of sobriety. And before, when I first got sober, Nick would do something, but today it was nothing. No breakfast, no banners, no balloons, not even the kids were there. I asked Nick where the kids were and he dryly told me, well, Cole, male 16, is skateboarding with a friend. The twins, male 13, are at a park. And I dropped off the triplets at the movies to watch Deadpool. I simply asked, why are you doing this? And he again said dryly, do what? They have plans and I can't force them to stay here. This is probably the part where I'm a bit of the asshole, We went back and forth for a little bit, and that's when I said out of anger, you can be exactly like your mother. He just sighed and stormed out. He still isn't home, and it's been a few hours. There's no dinner, no laundry done. The kids' bags aren't packed for school. I called, but no answer. So what should I do, Reddit? Should I apologize? What should I say to him? How can I fix this? I'm sorry this isn't very clear. This is very rushed, and I'll answer any questions. So, um, am I the asshole for being upset with my eldest son? I haven't heard the first story in a while, so this takes me back. <laughs> <laughs> off yeah. of yeah, <laughs> off of that, I definitely think you should apologize to your son because from that, it sounds like you just kind of took your frustrations out on him without explaining what your frustrations were, mm-hmm. and that's never okay. Yeah. Like you, and you're the dad (laughs) like he how he's not supposed to be catering to you like you expect a certain level of respect from your kids but it doesn't sound like he was being disrespectful at all it was just very immature for you to do that i feel like right yeah i didn't deserve that Mm -hmm. reaction at all how old was the eldest Uh, he's like 23 or 24 yeah yeah I mean, and he took all the kids where they needed to go. Like, he's the dad. Like, you could at least say thank you he's for dropping the all the kids off. So like, come long. on. Yeah, so he's, he's basically raising six kids yeah. right now. Crazy. Um, I think that's another thing, too, is, like, he's being parentified. Like, even at the end, OP had that little moment where he was like, there's no food. The laundry isn't done. The f- I'm like, exactly You're what Jazz said. You were the dad. Um, I get that. I mean, you even acknowledge that there was points where, you know, you neglected your son. Sounds like you neglected your other kids. And they (laughs) stepped up. Your your son stepped up to help with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, you never stepped back in as the father. And you're just kind of being like an uncle or a roommate or something to this guy who has like six kids when that's his older. When you're his dad, not his older brother or something. Literally. Um, 
because he him saying all that stuff it's like bro what did you take care of mm-hmm. with all that chore list like literally if you saw that it wasn't done be the dad and step up and do it right like you the man of the house yeah <laughs> just step up and also the fact that i think jazz again mentioned this earlier but the whole thing about how he doesn't he didn't get celebrated by his oldest son and like I think you're expecting a lot of people to plan stuff for you. Like if you wanted to be celebrated for this day, I think it'd be a good idea to maybe be like, hey, like maybe let's go out and do something or Mm -hmm. celebrate yourself. Don't expect other people to celebrate you. Make a big deal about it yourself. Right. Um, And just because he in the past celebrated your sobriety doesn't mean that he's always going to do that in the future, even if it's the best that you've done so far. So you know, be your biggest fan and celebrate your own sobriety and don't expect your son to do it. Agree. Yeah, to me, he acted like a child and like like he expected his son, aka his dad, to give him big ups. I'm like, that's not Literally. that's not your dad. That's not his responsibility. Mm-hmm. And I I think I hated the way he was like the way he was like the kids should be doing this for me or they should be like honoring me in that way. It's mm-hmm. like, he just hears the relationship. This is some times I get frustrated with family is just because we have this blood relationship and we have this tie, we have this name of father, mother, daughter. You also have to make sure you're maintaining those relationships that people want to do things for you or help you. It's not an obligation. Absolutely. You also have to pour into those relationships too, to get results out of it. Mm-hmm. And obviously you have not poured much into these relationships yeah Mm. and you can tell like just from like the dynamic of like how he was so comfortable posting that story it's like there is clearly you've clearly created a dynamic where like the kids like are supporting you right like emotionally with the chores that they do and like especially for an older child like the oldest child it's already like tough enough even if your parents were like you know older when they had you or whatever but especially when they're younger you kind of grow up with them you're their guinea pig you know and a lot of times like I I can relate to that for sure Mm -hmm. and there's like tough conversations that me and my parents have had to have but like since we've been able to talk through different things like it's brought so much healing but like this story just reminds me that like so many people like their parents don't don't even aren't even aware sometimes of like the stuff that they put you through like when they're growing up with you Mm -hmm. because they're so young and like it's like he doesn't even realize the problem with putting that burden on his kids to support him emotionally Mm -hmm. like especially at 16 like you're you're learning your own emotions you're learning how to manage your own stuff and who you are as a human being like in this world so to expect them to like make you feel good when you think it's important but not communicate that that's too much especially Mm -hmm. when he already has so many pressure of taking care of all these kids exactly being a parent that's a lot of responsibility as a teenager a lot um and he's literally only in his early 20s and he's taking care of like five or six kids Mm -hmm. oh i i don't know why i thought i heard he was 16 but the dad when he had him he was 15 god so the dad is around 38 to 40 years old because the son is like 23 or 20 24 and the dad had him when he was like 15, 14 or 15. So the dad is literally like almost 40 and he's, this is how he's acting. So mm. Man, acting like this. Wait, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Uh, Sam, you said something about like obligations and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another big thing. Like no day in the world is an obligation to be celebrated for. Like we only do it because of social pressure. Like you only celebrate Father's Day because of social pressure to celebrate father's day some people don't even acknowledge some days like Mm -hmm. your birthday it's no obligation to celebrate you it's just the social pressure of doing it so the fact that he's lashing out on something that is not an obligation nor like a big day like well it is a big day to be sober like Mm -hmm. congratulations like not discrediting that but it's not like if you don't do this you're the worst person ever Mm-hmm. and you lashed out on that yeah <laughs> like that's a crazy way to start 
all of this lashing out. And then to him, it's like, oh, this is the worst day ever. No one planned anything for me and everything's not taken care of. Right. It's like, bro. And it was his birthday. Oh, yeah. And his birthday. But you're just like, okay, you're not yeah, seeing that's... the bigger picture here. <laughs> yeah. You're the problem. <laughs> you're the reason no one's celebrating. Right. Yeah. And I agree, like, with what Maddie said, too. Like, sometimes, like, you have to, like, you have to celebrate yourself. So, like, I mean... And I'm not saying this would have made things different, but like if the week leading up to it, you're like, man, I'm so excited next Tuesday. Like I'm celebrating however many years sober on my whatever birthday. Like, I mean, not to say that that would drastically change like how his kids reacted because it just depends on like their relationship with him. But like you have to be excited about those things for yourself. You can't expect for other people to be more excited for you about things than you is it nice sometimes when they are yeah but you can't bank on that you can't put you can't you know dictate your emotions or let your emotions be affected by like other people's actions which is hard but at your age with the amount of kids that you have you should be able to do that by now Mm -hmm. and i i like that as a general principle of advocating for yourself Mm -hmm. But you start to remember this man was a drug addict for years and he had negative impacts on his children. So if he was that week before going like, I can't wait to be sober. It's going to be so good. And kids are like, I still remember the 15, 20 years of you being a drug addict and doing nothing for us. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't really care all that much. Tell me when it's 10 years because you still haven't done enough to prove to me that this, you're different, that you've changed that. I that's mean, the that's what they're seeing it as. Mm-hmm. They're they I'm sure they're happy for you in their own way, but they're like, what have you done for me, really? Agreed, because it's like, you know, even being sober, being sober does not change the issues. Like if you're still toxic towards them, which mm, it sounds like you are, yes. because like even like with my grandpa, like he was an alcoholic, and I mean he never became sober. He managed it more, but and he wasn't he wasn't a good father. Like when he was like younger, when and when my mom was younger and her siblings, but like all that I remember him being is like the best man alive. Like he was like my best friend and we had so much good memories together, but it was because like he changed how he treated people Mm -hmm. also. Like he wouldn't like, he knew that he shouldn't get like extremely belligerently drunk to where he gets sick, like around uh, my family or around my mom and stuff, because he knew that would bring up like a lot of emotional trauma for her and stuff. So he just changed like how he treated people, even though he still, he still couldn't kick the addiction, but it's like, that makes all the difference. Like when you still are very intentional about showing love to the people that, you know, to the people that you love and showing that you're making a commitment to them you know even though you you weren't the best father you know he made it a point to be the best grandpa in the capacity that he could so it's like it's not even just the sobriety which but big ups to you for being sober for so long Mm -hmm. that is a huge accomplishment because most people can't you know most people can't kick addictions like that so that's good but you also have to work on yourself do some self-reflection and continue to grow in other ways than just abstaining from whatever substances he used to use yeah i think that's such an important point because from his perspective it sounds like he's saying the thing that i have to fix was being a drug addict like that Mm -hmm. was my problem not doing it anymore is going to fix everything. It's going to fix my relationship with my family. It's going to like, no, mm-hmm. there's a lot more work you have to do. And it seems like he's stopping short of that or mm-hmm. he thinks that being the addict was the only problem. No, it's things that came from you being an addict. It's mm-hmm. the relationship that you fostered during that time. Unfortunately, you're going to have to kind of eat crow or like you're going to have to bow down to a lot of things that you mm-hmm. might feel uncomfortable doing because pride. of things you happened before. Yeah. Your pride is going to, you're going to have to take a hit on that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he's, that's the part where he's not understanding. Yeah. And in these updates, he's probably, it's very clear. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm ready for the updates. So this next update is actually from the eldest son. Mm. He also wrote on here. So am I the asshole for being upset with my eldest son? My perspective So my father posted on Reddit about how I didn't celebrate his birthday in 11 months of sobriety. I know that makes it seem like I'm the asshole. I would just like to give more context. My father and mother have been horrible for most of my life. They drink and do drugs. 
They'd never ever take care of me, but instead they'd restart and just keep having kids, but just abandon them with me. The only adult in my life was my grandmother, but this year she passed away from cancer. Despite being sick her entire life, she's always tried her best to help me. Last year, I had to file for custody because of my father, and he was still drinking, and he got into a car accident with the kids in the car. Thankfully, none of them were hurt, so I filed for custody. The triplets mentioned in the story are my half-siblings, and I got their mother to give up her parental rights. She's a sweet woman and made it easy, and so did my mother. This summer, my father came back to us, and seeing the kids so happy, seeing how he actually did stay sober... I swallowed my pride and I let him stay with us, which day by day I'm regretting more and more. And I just snapped the other day. He woke up at 1130 and just started blaming me that the kids were gone. And yes, maybe it was passive aggressive of me to not remind the kids about his birthday and sobriety. I've just been overwhelmed with a lot. I can't sleep at night because of how much I've been working. My therapist thinks I'm burnt out. I think so too. I had to take care of my grandmother and shortly after my grandfather. Two of my cousins had to move in with us and she got pregnant and I know that she can't take care of that kid. She's only 18 and I know that I'm going to have to end up raising that baby and to be very honest with you, I don't want to raise it. I don't want to raise any more kids. I'm done. My dad didn't say the actual truth of why I left. He mentioned that he said that I should just leave because the kids would be better off without me. And that's when I left. It was dramatic of me to just storm off, which in retrospect is just something my mother would do. But I had to leave. And that and the stupid argument I had with my cousin, I just needed some air. I called off from work and turned off my phone, which I will never be doing again because of how much it stressed me out. My therapist had me come in for an emergency therapy session. She told me I need to take a minute before I head back home. So I went to the farmer's market. I tried some overpriced jams. I went for a motorcycle ride to check out some guitars and bookshops. I haven't been able to be there in a while because, like I said, I've been so busy. I got some flowers and I went to visit my grandmother's grave and I just talked. I know she can't hear me, but it just felt good to talk to her. I went to the beach to read a little, I took a nap, and as stupid and childish as it sounds, I blew some bubbles. I ended the day with getting a new tattoo and I got myself dinner. I know I was really irresponsible and selfish today, but I'm just so tired. I hope people find this and hear my side. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like the thing that's also frustrating to hear about this story is how much blame they are putting on themselves Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for kids that's not their own, for a situation that's not their own. Like, um, it sucks because I know people in my life who are similar to this, where they will take up responsibility that other people are slacking and it ends up becoming just too much for them. And it's kind of frustrating to see. And I hope that eventually one day he can realize that he doesn't have to do it um, because it's not his responsibility to worry about them. I understand that he feels like it is. And I know that it's it's very like selfless for him to be taking up all that he's taking up. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have to do it like he doesn't have to sacrifice his life Mm -hmm. to pick up for what his parents slacked, you know, Mm -hmm. Um. And what he did today to like relax was not selfish of him. Like he need, well, it is, but it's not bad. It's mm-hmm. good. He mm-hmm. needed that and he probably needs more of it. And, um, I just really wish he had help, but he has a hindrance and it's his dad. Right. And it's crazy. Like the fact that like he even opened up not only his heart, but his home to his dad, like you can come stay with us. And for him to, like, basically accuse him of not helping him on his birthday and his 11-month... Sorry, it hasn't even been a year. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I can understand, like, a a year year being super, super (laughs) upset. Come on. And then it's like... That that probably was just really triggering for him because it's like you're like upset with me for not helping you in whatever you, way you see fit. But I literally have no help any of the time because all the adults that were supposed to take care of all these things in my life just didn't show up how they needed to. Right. So I had to like that's a lot of pressure, especially for a 20 something year old like 
that's just it's really heavy so i think he definitely like you said maddie definitely needed that day to like just take a break Mm -hmm. and you know even though it's hard especially when you get older and kids are in the equation you have to schedule like just some me time or just doing something where you don't have to use your brain and just relax for a little bit because you will continue to be burnt out. So you have to do that like consistently, whether it's like once, you know, bi-weekly, once a month, but you have to make sure your mental is okay. Cause you can't pour from an empty, empty cup. Mm-hmm. And then you can end up, you know, doing or saying some things that you maybe don't mean because you're so burnt out. And it's like, sometimes you just get to a point. It's like, you just need to, check out for a little bit and that's okay like you don't have to feel guilty about it like the fact that his dad said the kids are better off without you and that's the reason why he left that's what he said right yeah Yeah. Yeah. and he he literally only could have said that to hurt him because you know that's not true they would be better without you actually exactly yeah (laughs) It worries me. Because when one finger's pointing at you, there's five. Five. There's five <laughs> pointing right back. Sorry, um, that was a... He's getting on Brandon <laughs> for something. He thought the the finger gun thing was like, there's one finger pointing at you, you got five pointed back at you. But the thing is like, there's three pointed back at you. Like, there's more. <laughs> I, I never knew that. Oh. <laughs> so stupid. It makes me mad. Uh, three. Yeah, clearly. I forgot what I was going to say. Um... But anyway, it's really sad because I, I noticed the bubble thing. That's what's really making the story 10 times sad because more sad because it's like one of those things where you're doing like he's had to grow up so fast that he can't mm-hmm. really even connect with doing normal child things. He's like, it seems childish, but it's like, no. You're doing that because you didn't have a childhood. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seems healing to you. And not, oh my God. When I heard that, I was like, oh yeah. The thing I was going to say, but I forgot is I feel like, because he mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, even the dad saying the one line about, you know, the kids are better off without you. It really makes me feel like even though the dad was sober, he was probably like talking shit the whole time he was there. Oh yeah. Saying all these like little things. And just being belittling because even, you know, OP said in the beginning about how he was every single day he regretted it. So being in an environment like that where somebody is belittling you every single day, beating you down, like even if you weren't, even if you are sober, it sounds like you're still not necessarily like like Sam was saying, you don't have a good relationship. You're not a good person. There's a lot of stuff you need to work on past drug addiction and getting better and also having a relationship with the kids it also just sounds like you're just like beating down on like your oldest Mm -hmm. and i guarantee you i i have a feeling that was not the only time yeah stuff was said for op to walk out oh i'm sure it's not because also and i'm sure like the son probably wasn't aware of this but when people like get sober from things like it messes up like your emotional like regulation like even though you're sober, it's like sometimes you can get so irritated or it's like you just like lash out sometimes. Mm. And then like sometimes you don't even like realize like the weight of what you're saying because it's just like something that I don't know how to explain it, but it just like makes you feel better in the moment. And then you like look back maybe a couple of days later and you're like, wow, like that was really not OK. But it's like. So it's hard dealing with people that are going through stuff like that because it takes a long time for your brain to be clear and for everything to kind of like level out because your body is so used to like, you know, yeah, like, you know, anytime you're feeling certain emotions that are triggering, oh, I'll just drink, I'll just smoke, whatever. So when you don't have those vices and like the frustration just builds up and you're not used to like regulating your emotions on your own, Mm -hmm. like sometimes stuff just comes out. So I'm sure there has been like more moments since he's moved in with his son that, you know, he's said things that was triggering to any of his kids. Mm -hmm. Cause that's just how it goes. Like it takes a while for you to get like back regulated. Yeah. So I'm going to read top comment and then we'll reset the cameras. Um, So top comment here, honey, no one with any emotional intelligence thought you were the in this situation your dad sounds like he's got mental health issues on top of the alcoholism i'm very glad to hear that you have custody of the kids because i was super confused at that point it's okay to be a little selfish sometimes self-care is really important 
That's what I feel the worst about. Because in a perfect world, yes, he's not responsible for these kids. He didn't bring these kids in the world. It's not supposed to be his responsibility to take care of them. But I know he probably feels so much guilt that he he doesn't feel like there's an escape. Like it would be nice. He was like, you know what? I'm out. But these are his brothers and sisters. He probably doesn't want to see them in a really bad situation. So or foster home. Yeah. So there's no like real good answer or real good solution to help him because the real solution would be like, well, get away from it, break away from his responsibility. But then he has to live with that, mm-hmm. and that could be worse than what he's going through now. That's mm-hmm. tough in so and of it, itself. Yeah, it's very tough. So that like I think I almost cried when I read that story because I was. I just felt the predicament he's in, mm-hmm. and I don't know what I would do if I was in that situation. I'm like, that would break me. If it's I was so in that heavy. That's yes. a lot to deal with. Yeah. And then, like, you have to think about the brothers and sisters have trauma too. Yes. Yeah. So I'm sure, like, it's it's not easy, like, raising them and trying to talk them through things and get them through, you know, hard emotions and stuff when you're still dealing with your own and at such a young age, like your frontal lobe is not even developed yet. Like it's just a lot. (laughs) Okay. So this next update is back from the dad. Most of them will be from the dad. Oh God. So am I the asshole for being upset with my eldest son update? A lot of you won't be happy with my update. So if you're the kind to leave hateful messages or ask stupid questions like you did in my last post, please leave. I'm going to say this again. Please do not comment unless you are a parent or an alcoholic yourself. I don't want to hear it from the parentified crowd. Sick of it. Yes, I was a bad dad. We get it. Move along now. My son had a really bad breakdown today. He just went absolutely nuclear. I have no idea where it came from. I knew he has been stressed this last few weeks, but I wasn't expecting this. Thankfully, the kids were not home to see it. He shaved his head and he just started shouting a bunch of nonsense. It reminded me of how his mother left before our divorce. I mentioned this already, but he is bipolar, type 1 if it matters, like his mother. I think that might be what it is. Because like I mentioned before, his mother acted the same way before she abandoned me and the kids. She went nuclear one day and just asked for a divorce. I ended up calling the police and they came. They went upstairs and after around 20 minutes, they just explained that he needs to be taken to a psych ward and that they'll take him. So that's where he is. I hate to say it, but it's so hard. Thankfully, my girlfriend came over to help me out and she's been a big help. I tried to call a few hospitals, but none of them can give me any information. A part of me wants to try and testify for custody again because clearly Nick can't keep it together. And I find it very hypocritical that he's been criticizing my parenting skills and now he is the one in the psych ward. Um, Things are good with my girlfriend and I have a stable job now that we have the update cleared up. So let's clear up some of the questions. Yes, the house belongs to Nick, but let me explain why. The house was originally my parents. When my father passed, my mother decided to give it to me. But then Nick decided to undertake me and take the house because he wanted the kids to live in a familiar place. It's not my fault that he owns the house. The reason why I gave the twins and the triplets that are the same age is because they have different mothers. When I was deep in my addiction, I was ashamed to say, but I had a short fling with a woman. We tried to make it work, but we drove each other crazy and she decided to leave. I do stuff for my kid's birthday, just not Nick's. I don't parent because up until now, he doesn't let me. Once again, it isn't my fault. Anytime I try and help out, he just gets frustrated with me and yells, I'll do it myself. For example, one day I was filling out some paperwork and I needed the kids, teachers' names, and he just yells, I'll do it myself, never mind. Or another time is when I was grocery shopping and I forgot to get my son some medication for his ADHD. And when I respectfully just said, I'm sorry, I didn't know he had ADHD, once again, he just yelled like a toddler. I hope everyone can see my point of view. I think that's it for now. No, no, we cannot see your point of view. And (laughs) hearing these updates is going to send me into the psych ward. Like it's triggering me in every way possible because it's like man up and take some accountability for your actions. After every single thing that you said in that update, it's it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault that I forgot my son's medication. It 1000% is your fault. And this is probably the problem. And this is probably why Nick gets so upset with you. Mm -hmm. Because you expect everybody else to take accountability, especially your oldest son. Mm -hmm. And you, but you don't want to take accountability for your actions. You And if you were really to look at what's going on, you 
you're the reason why he is the way he yes. is and he's trying his best like it, it it even pissed me off that you called the police to have him taken into the psych ward because yes i believe in people getting help but it seems like he was just blowing up at you in in frustration and like people don't realize like how harmful it it can be to be institutionalized sometimes like a psych ward is an institution and like those type of experiences can really change people for a long time especially like you know who you can't even find where he's at so who knows what kind of medicine they're putting him on or you know what's going on with him I feel so bad for him like it's just so frustrating because it's like how how are you going to get the kids back now but you can't take any responsibility for your actions all i see coming from you having the kids is ne child neglect abuse you probably becoming an alcoholic again like and i'm sorry if that sounds harsh but like you have to get a grip and like realize like i don't understand how you even typed that and thought that that was going to smooth everything over right. like you're crazy you need to be in a psych ward and you don't need to have those children. And who is this girlfriend? Like, that's just going to add more trauma to them. Like, these kids are not familiar with this lady. Who's who's to say that she's not going to bring more BS into their life? Right. Like, I feel so bad for these kids. You can't make these type of people. Like, <laughs> Tyler Perry couldn't even write this type of villain. <laughs> He wishes he could, because this is some... Well, he's honestly, like, he's yeah. watching this like, ooh, let me write that down. <laughs> honestly, reading these, this is when I started to think, oh, this could be fake. Just because it seems... He seems so out of touch, like so out of touch that it's like almost rage bait. Like he's trying to <laughs> anger people, because even the way he starts like... Only if you want to hear from these certain people. Like, it's freaking Reddit. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to only hear about those exactly. people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's just the way he talks. I, I see it like, I was like seeing it as a movie where we talk about the instance where his son is like, his son's like, can you do this? He's like, well, I forgot to. Do it. I'm sorry. And he's like, he's like, my son yelled at me like, ah. But we're seeing it from the dumb person's point of view where they're like, why are they being mad at me? Where no one would ever identify with that person ever. He's clearly in the wrong. But he's like, he just yelled at me for no reason because I forgot the medication for my kid. This I bet that yelling is from the the years of when he was parenting these kids alone and you weren't doing anything. He just he cut all that off. He's like, that was in the past. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. Now we're from now. Why are you mad now? Because of everything you did before. And you're consistently breaking trust. Yes. Like yeah. he's giving you like a, a little bit of trust, letting you move back in, giving you some responsibilities yeah. of picking up, you know, some of the kids medication and you're fumbling it every time. <laughs> and he's like trying to let you back yeah. in, but you're like proving yourself not to be capable of being let back into the family. And you don't see any issues with this. And and you're acting like the child. But you want to talk about your child acting like one. Oh, he lashed out at me. Uh, duh. Duh. He like, what, what do you expect? For every little Take thing it he's on the doing. chin. Take some accountability yes. and move forward and realize that because of the atmosphere that you've created with your irresponsibility and your, um, an ability to show up that it is going to be harder for them to accept you into their lives. And there is going to be hard days where maybe they do want to yell when you don't do something right. That's part of it. You either stick, stick there through, through it, continue to build the trust by being consistent and showing up or leave them alone and stop bringing more trauma to yeah. them. Cause even in good situations with, parents who are like in tune with their kids there's problems there where they're gonna be mad at you you're Absolutely. gonna be mad at them it's the same situation you still have to be consistent throughout the entire thing you can't mm -hmm. throw them away just because they made you mad one day or they didn't live up to what you said like Literally. good parents have to deal with this and now you put so much bad into it you still have to deal with it if you think being a parent is important to you mm -hmm. i think back to the the fake potential of fake thing. yeah I think the only reason it could be real is if he's a narcissist, like complete narcissism. <laughs> well, I, I know, I know, yeah. but it's like, he doesn't know that he's because knowing a narcissist, everything that's happened to them 
they were like, oh, this is why it happened. Yeah. This is why it's happened. It's like, no, you literally played a part in every yeah. single thing before it happened. And you just want to just like you don't want to bring that part up. Yeah. Or you don't talk about it or you're like. Yeah, so that's the only thing. But the sun. I agree. I agree. I'm like every single time, like she read, but it's not my fault. I just like it was just like a little spark of rage in me. Fault. I'm like, it is your fault. literally, you're explaining something that is entirely your fault, and you're like, it's not my fault. Like, what do you think? People are gonna feel bad for you? Oh, you wanted people in the comments like, oh, I'm sorry, you have right, to go bro. through this as a parent, and blah, blah. no. Get up, man up. <laughs> Literally. And that's what I was wondering. Did he go through like the traditional like 12 steps where they're going through the steps, making amends, asking for forgiveness, doing that work? No. It seems like he's skipping over a All lot of, of it. stuff. And you just want people to view you as a good human, yeah, even though you're not acting you're not. like a good human. And to go with the, the narcissist thing, that's one thing about narcissists. Like they're always so much more concerned with like how they appear to others than mm -hmm. like how what they're doing affects others. So he's constantly like, oh, it's not my fault. And I'm, but if you're not a parent, you wouldn't understand. It's like, like no, human yeah. beings. exactly. I mean, like you're not are. being a good human being, yeah. not that, even like take the father part away. Right. Like yeah. you're just, you're, you're not getting it. That would also explain the, the first like beginning phrase too of, oh, I only want these type of people to say something because it's like because you know yeah. you know it's you're not that oblivious because you know like other how other people are going to be right. looking at that so you're you ain't slick because the only way he's going to get good responses is like i only want former drug addicts within the last year who with five kids <laughs> to comment because they're like there's no one who's gonna they're probably be, like yeah my kids do the yeah. same thing yeah, yeah. because I, I don't think you're them. all I think crazy like man i messed up and i'm trying so hard he's like wait no you're supposed to be on my side it doesn't exist <laughs> what you're doing literally so he made another post about a week later the mm. dad did of course he did. Yeah, he did and it says i don't know how to connect with my son I know all of you are going to gloat and laugh and make a mockery out of my struggles, but it isn't funny. My eldest son is still in the hospital, and honestly, things are okay. The kids are happier and seem less stressed. The main problem is that one of the older kids, Cole, male 17, isn't connecting with me. I don't expect him to just be happy with what's happening, but it's like he's purposely defying me and my rules. I don't just I just don't understand why. All the other kids are adjusting just fine. And Liam mentioned before seeming happy and more relaxed. I've tried everything, but he just keeps asking, when is Nick coming home? And it's so frustrating and infuriating. He doesn't even know that Nick doesn't love him as much as Cole does. He doesn't know that Nick is jealous of him. Please give me some advice. Once again, only if you are a father. I feel like other men would get me in my pain right now. I don't want to hear any more about parentification. I honestly don't care. Thanks for reading. And then an edit that says, edit to add, I feel like Nick has done parental alienation, which hurts. I don't know what he said to Cole that poisoned him so much against me, but it hurts. He keeps comparing me to Nick saying things like that isn't how Nick would do it or Nick would do this. Thank God for my girlfriend because I would have lost it on him if it weren't for her. Should I just give up on Cole and focus on the younger ones? I have my niece who would also agree that I'm doing a better job than Nick. You're restarting the cycle I meet this all over dude. again. What is this woman? Who is this F woman? F that girlfriend. Dude. F you. F that girlfriend. Like Who wants to be with this man? You're not a victim. He's, you he's are not to make a victim. Into one. Get over yourself. Put the first thing first, which is the kids. Understand that you have not been there and you have caused a lot of trauma in their life. So, of course, some of them are not going to like you. And the only reason why some of them probably do like you is because you're probably uh, less of a parent than Nick was. So they feel like they're getting the a comments. break. Or does, does you he want me to read top comment? Yeah. Does he say the uh, like curfew thing? No, he, not in this one. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I only grabbed that's what like, immediately came to my mind is like you're pretty much not parenting them so they probably feel like they're having a break from like the discipline and structure that they don't realize that you need as a child that nick was trying to provide to them either that or um i thought when i heard it that the kids were in survival mode mm. it's like you get your 
only parental figure stripped away, but technically that is your dad. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I get to be with my dad, especially the younger kids. Mm -hmm. It's like, I get to be with my dad finally. Especially the younger kids. They're Mm -hmm. like, I just, I know I'm supposed to love my dad. I'll just go to my dad. They Mm -hmm. don't know any better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, because I'm like, I don't know if it might be the next update, but there was like. I looked through and I didn't, I mean, unless it's in the story, I didn't see anything in the comments. Because they were like, he would let the kid have a curfew of like 3 a.m. Like Nick had the curfew of like 11. He's like, I'm, I'm being better than Nick by giving him more freedom by parenting still, them yeah. less and he's exactly i do i just let them do whatever they want and they're still mad at me for yeah, that's it. literally not how parents <laughs> yeah like at all like kids need structure even if they don't like it it just that's just not and the solution here for this kid is to be like well should i just stop parenting them and just focus on the other kids that's like, not what yeah that's said. not traumatizing yeah, yeah. at all you know what i'm giving up on that's you. exactly what he needs <laughs> the way that he is like being like i'm a good parent but then doing all these things it makes me think what is your definition of a good parent because it doesn't sound like he you're doesn't a good parent know. at all I don't think and and wasn't it mentioned like in the first thing that like oh he didn't have like uh good parents growing up or whatever and he had this baby like super young yeah okay yeah i get that but at a certain point you have to take responsibility for your actions and your yeah life you cannot grow up to be 40 something like you are now 60 something still doing the same things because you you made the choice not to change certain things people that people come from all different kinds of backgrounds and when you grow up you have to look at yourself Mm -hmm. sometimes it takes situations where things go wrong or sometimes you're just self-reflecting and you have to say you know what i think i am this way because of how i grew up and you either you either change it and you try something else even if you don't know if that's exactly what to do Mm -hmm. or you just keep keep going with it but whichever just whatever decision you make that's on you you Mm -hmm. can't blame anybody else for it and like that's one thing that i'm so intolerant of is like people that grow up and say oh i do this terribly toxic like ridiculous thing because i never saw this or i never saw that i'm sorry that's not an excuse like you're saying it you're vocalizing it to me right now so you know it's wrong exactly and you still have some accountability for your life there's so many people People who have been in similar situations, had kids young, grown up with abusive parents, with addictive parents, parents that gave up on them. But they when that happened to them, they make it a choice in their mind. My kids will never have to experience this. I'm going to do everything in my power to change and actually follow through with it. And it works. Mm -hmm. So. Other people's excuses of like, oh, yeah, well, I was set up or whatever. These are just the cards I was dealt. You were dealt them. But what did you do? You didn't shuffle them at all. You just kept them right here your whole entire life. Like, come on. He's been using it as an excuse excuse. for too long. Because I think at a certain point, like you're saying, you're like, I can understand growing up like that. Like that is not necessarily an excuse, but it's it's an excuse for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But then there's eventually a point where it's like, like everyone you guys are saying you need to have been working on it, especially if you are aware of it and you're pointing out. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, no, I don't, I feel like maybe it is rage bait or something because it's like, he's asking these like questions and it's like in a way that such an insufferable way. Like it's pissing me off. Matter and matter. Yes. And it's (laughs) pissing me off how pissed I'm getting. Cause I'm like, (laughs) cause to a certain extent, it's like, I can understand like, okay. Yeah. If you didn't have any level of being, a parent being uh self-aware well self-aware but you didn't have great parents so Mm -hmm. you going into being a parent you're not necessarily the best and what you think is like oh this is what i would have loved as a kid i would have loved no curfew as a kid but then when you become a parent it's like no that's not that's not what that is he's too old you've had chances to change sounds like before this you were just going to alcoholism to just kind of drown everything out Mm -hmm. but now that you're not doing that like you have to keep working on stuff being sober is not enough period Mm -hmm. but i don't i don't ever want to be on this guy's side but if you've never had an example of what a good parent is and you're obviously not doing any like self-work to find out what a good parent is how do you know you try different things. You try anything, anything other than what you've experienced. But, I was going to say, you try the tr- opposite of what you experienced first. <laughs> well, yes. And then you keep from there. To try anything 
would mean that you're trying to improve. Like yes. you would know you would know what you're doing is bad. And it doesn't even seem like he knows what he's doing is bad. He just knows when it it's impacts negatively on him. So if mm. something that he doesn't like happens to him, then he's like, something's weird. But then it doesn't why feel is like this he's, happening to he me? doesn't see the connection between his actions and then the output that's coming from it. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Say, and you need to be in a psych ward, not mm. your son. I was going to say, I mean, I don't really know the <clears throat> true meaning of, you know, narcissist and all this stuff. But if you are coming from not necessarily caring about being a parent, but just wanting to be liked more than the person who was raising your kids for so long had to put your son in the parental role right. and he's better and they like him more. If you want to be that person who might have some narcissistic tendencies, you want to be liked so much and you're losing. Maybe that's where that's coming from of like not saying it's right, but maybe that's where he's coming from of like, he just wants to win his kids over. Cause even at this point he's saying, should I just give up on this kid? Like this kid sucks. He I'll like, never win that he like one. likes Nick more. Yeah. Should I just move on? Like, I feel like that's his mindset. If we were to ever try and understand it, mm -hmm. it's wanting to be liked at the end of the day. And that's and a that's sad it. place to be mm -hmm. as a 40 something year old man, because mm -hmm. you learn <laughs> exactly father of like six, like, not everybody is going to like you and you cannot get your self-worth off of validation from others. Like that's just not how life works. You have to like yourself. You have to care enough about yourself to do certain things. Also, if the kids can't do it for you, get it together for you. How do you even have a girlfriend at this point? Like, well, she probably gives them that validation. You're pr probably, probably like, but, you're doing that great. I'm proud her, of you. And But for her to be with somebody like this, do you imagine how messed up she, she is. She definitely has to be messed up. Like, I have to. <laughs> she has to be messed up. Because I, I can't Jesus. imagine he's giving anything in reciprocation. We need to hold hands to and pray for this family if they're real. I'm serious. This is not okay. So top comment here. You're upset because a 17-year-old who is nearly a man himself doesn't respect or connect to a man, you, who he's never really seen as a person to admire, respect, or look up to. You were an alcoholic, absent parent. Your child has 17 years worth of looking up to Nick in the, as the male role model who took care of him and raised him. Yet you're surprised that he's not connecting with you. Honestly, given the normal surges happening for males at that age, you're kind of lucky that he only defies you instead of lashing out in much worse ways for 17 years worth of poor behavior towards him. What do you do to fix it? Go to parenting classes for the sake of all the other kids in the house, except it'll take a long time for Cole to accept and respect you. I'm talking years, not weeks, if ever. Mm -hmm. Settle in for the long haul, providing appropriate care and support without any expectations of a return in the near future. And OP responded, I'm here now. That's what matters. His younger siblings see that. I don't understand why he can't. This is textbook par parental alienation. The top comment was literally giving you a blueprint of what to do. And he's like, he's he just, it just past went it. right yeah. over his head. Like he, 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 he has like the emotional maturity of like a seven year old. That's too old. I feel like three year old, <laughs> man. Oh my God. So this next one, even the, the title kind of makes you a little pissed <laughs> off if you know what I'm talking about. I'm not responding to this one. <laughs> I need a break. Would I be the asshole if I asked my son to take more responsibility? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you would. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from six days ago. Would I be the asshole if I asked my son to take more responsibility? My son finally came back from the psych ward. According to his doctor, he was close to severe burnout. The whole situation was incredibly stressful, and it brought back terrible moments of the stunts his mother used to pull. The whole I'm having a breakdown act, it was right act. out of her playbook. He just up and left the kids, which is exactly what he constantly complains about that I did. <laughs> While he was gone, the kids seemed happier. There was no stress over food, homework, chores, or anything like that. They were finally having fun just being kids without the weight of his mood hanging over them. When Nick came back, he spent his first day sleeping. He didn't make dinner, didn't say hi to the kids, didn't do anything. He ordered lunch and dinner for himself, but he didn't bother to get any for me or his siblings. 
Then on Tuesday, he started yelling at me about not taking care of his grandmother the way he normally does. Nick usually takes her for walks, feeds her, handles her medication, and bathes her, but I had no idea she was in bad shape. When I tried to explain, it turned into another fight. His younger siblings came downstairs, and thankfully they came to my defense. Regrettably, I told him, see, the kids are happier under my care. You keep calling me incompetent, but it's clear they like me better. They're my kids. He just sighed and said, you know what? I'm done. You say the kids are happier without me? You think you can handle it all? Fine. Handle it. I'm too young for this shit. Have fun. And by the way, I was your kid too. Ever since then, he abandoned the kids again. He still lives in the house, but he doesn't do anything. For example, the other day, I forgot to pick up groceries for breakfast. The kids had to eat toast with butter, and all they did was complain. Meanwhile, Nick just sat there on the couch drinking his coffee and saying, I normally do the grocery shopping on Sundays and walked away smugly. Or the other day, he was taking a bubble bath, but one of my sons, male 13, needed his laundry done. Nick just said, you can ask your dad, and went back to his bath. He won't help with the kids' homework, and the only chores he does are cleaning up after himself, and when he cooks or uses a plate, he only helps Cole, male 17. Nick isn't acting like himself. On Sunday, he came home after hours of being gone, not answering his phone. He stumbled in drunk with two friends practically carrying him. They didn't even apologize. They just dropped him on the couch. I didn't even know he had close friends. He's being completely irresponsible. He doesn't do anything around the house and it's starting to fall apart. The kids don't listen to me and it's all so overwhelming. He doesn't even take care of his grandmother anymore. How do I talk to him about taking on more responsibility? I feel like I'm drowning. Even my girlfriend feels overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm not responding anymore. I feel like I do agree with you now, Sam, that this is fake because there's no way you're typing out all this stuff and you can't connect the dots at your grown age. Like, I have nothing else to say. It's literally crazy. I have nothing else to say. This is absolutely ridiculous. And, like, everything that you're accusing Nick of is, like, something you need to look in the mirror because you're the exact embodiment of that. You've That's had all I them have for say. a couple of weeks. You're already overwhelmed, and you're like, and you're like, why isn't he why stepping is he out helping? more? He just got back <laughs> from the doing psych this ward. For his life. <laughs> he just got back from the psych ward. Did anybody check on him? Has anybody asked him how they can better help him so that he doesn't reach a place of extreme burnout? He comes back and you call it an act. Come on, I, I have nothing else to say. You're you're. A, you're a lost cause as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not going to let your situation ruin my mental health. (laughs) I was good before I came here and I'm leaving good. (laughs) So I'm done. Well, that's good. Actually. If if you were going to say, and I'm upset leaving here, I was like, Oh no, I'm leaving here perfectly fine. So that's what I'm done. Thinking about Hibachi. (laughs) I be honest. Yeah. I I said all I needed to say. (laughs) Um, the, yeah. The part that upsets me is, uh, the the fact that, the whole thing and then the fact that he's like basically like i'm a better father i can take on what these kids can't do and then at the end he's also saying he can't do i can't the control things. these kids yeah. they don't listen to me fix it jesus i can't do laundry i can't get groceries i can't do anything a normal parent would do i forgot to do and groceries. so good i'm great at <laughs> they this. love me yeah and then he says yeah. his girlfriend is feeling overwhelmed. And it's like because your girlfriend's yeah. probably doing everything. I honestly don't think he's probably doing that much. I think for I, I think he put it off anything. on his girlfriend. Yeah, I don't think he's doing one. And thing. he's gonna run her away just like he runs yeah. everybody else away one by one. It did make me sad though in their conversation that they had, where he was like, "Okay, fine. You don't, you think you can take care of this? Just so you know, I'm your kid too. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was. And you won't take care of me, right? And You're he just trying, heard that. He just took that. It was like. Took it and, and like he's doing it with everything else. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, I again, feel, it's I don't like I think he sees Nick as his child. I think he sees him as an equal like or more. Roommate. Yeah, like he's like he says he's a dad, but he still. I think he still sees Nick as their dad. So he's like, "Why aren't you doing what a dad would do?" Even though I'm the dad. He's he like, told you he was done. Yeah. He told you you wouldn't be able to handle it. How are you not able to connect those things? He told you you wouldn't be able to handle it. And he's like, oh, now I'm overwhelmed. And blah, yeah. blah, blah. 
I wonder why. It's almost as if your son tried to tell you. And instead of admitting, oh, yeah, he was right. It's been a week and I'm overwhelmed. And so is everybody else around me. You're like, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know why nobody's listening to me. Because you're not capable. And people tried to tell you that. Right. So top comment here. This guy started posting on his birthday not too long ago. He's a recovering alcoholic, the mother of his children, a drug abuser. Things were so bad that his oldest child was taking care of all of his siblings and got custody, permanent custody, once he was an adult. OP toddles downstairs on his birthday and is pissed because there's no birthday banner or breakfast made for him and the kids aren't home waiting on him with a cake and to celebrate. Mind you, this is the parent who's not been a parent. He gets mad at the son who's been raising his kids for him. Son gives an appropriate response. OP goes on and on about how he's been sober for 11 months and is owed all of this care and respect and completely ignores all of the comments about he how he never did that for his kids. So why should he expect it from them? And being sober for 11 months doesn't make him father of the year. Oh, and son is also caring for the grandmother. And an added bonus is OP tells son he's just like his drug using mother who's not in the picture and hasn't been in for years. Son ends up having a mental health crisis. Dad is giving himself kudos for stepping up and taking care of his kids while his son is hospitalized. Now OP is back tooting his own horn and bashing on the person who's been taking care of his kids since he was a small child because he's been doing it for a few weeks. OP, you're still a piece of shit. You can never make it up to your son for stealing his childhood, and you should be grateful he lets you live with him. You should be paying him back for all the money he spent caring for your kids. I honestly hope this is fiction because it blows my mind that you're still trying to get people to congratulate you for doing something right for a few weeks. Get the hell over yourself. If you think you deserve recognition for what you have done, why don't you give recognition to your son for all the years he's been doing it? You really suck. And not doing anything right, doing what you're supposed to do. Like literally, yes. I don't think you need to get celebrated for. What that. do you want? A cookie? Yeah. <laughs> you get nothing. Literally, you stole the fizzy lifting drinks, <laughs> and you get nothing. nothing. <laughs> what is that from? Willy Willy Wonka. Wonka. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> OG one. Oh, but he was so mad. I got scared. I'm like, dang. Literally, I thought I was in trouble yeah, after like, that scene. I was like. <laughs> and I'm like, it was really Grandpa Joe's fault. <laughs> Grandpa Joe was a villain throughout the entire movie. <laughs> and then he almost got Charlie almost lost the whole factory because of Grandpa Joe. He's like, you should just drink it anyway. I'm like, Grandpa <laughs> Joe, you're a role model, allegedly. Well, isn't that something that people point out from the beginning of the it movie? Grandpa walk. Joe is a bad person. Because he like he's he acting walk. like he couldn't take care of himself this whole time. And then the moment he has an opportunity, Charlie's he's like, up I and jumping tell you, around. He's running around the I know. house. Can I just say Break how dancing. confusing that was for me as a kid to see four, <laughs> four elderly people in a bed in the, in the bed room. and they only stay in the Wait, bed? Was Charlie, I'm like, is was that how it was back mother? in the day? Mm-hmm. Was she a single she mother? She was a single mother taking That's care of like, them. Take your mom, Charlie. She's caring for these old people. And y'all got 20 kids. She got 20 Give kids. Giving them sponge baths and all. People, and she's like, I'll take my lying grandpa who pretended he couldn't walk for 20 years. And well, did, did, Charlie, Charlie, did Charlie ask the grandpa or did the grandpa was like, I'm going with you, Charlie? I can't I remember. Think he did. He's like, I think he did. Grandpa, Joe, I love you. And I'm like... <laughs> And, and the, the mom's, mom's just like over tired. There, the mom's beat. She's the like, mom's making the cabbage soup, and she's just like, <laughs> "I work two doubles." And, and Grandpa Joe's like, "I guess I can walk." Again. <laughs> I hated Grandpa Joe. Just man. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> he was dancing. He was breaking it down. Crazy. Oh, what a bad guy! So this, this guy last... is Grandpa Joe. I feel <laughs> <laughs> writing this. No, story. Grandpa yeah. Joe had a little bit more. <laughs> Grandpa Joe. <laughs> was self-aware. That's why he never mentioned how bad what he did sitting in a bed for lo- so long. This guy's like, what, I sit in a bed for so long? My my daughter takes care of me? Like, what's wrong what's with that? What's wrong with that? Why are you Charlie mad? got the golden ticket. Yeah. I had to go. It's her job. Okay. So this final update is from the sun from 21 hours ago. Oh, wow. Oh. My family Fresh. is falling apart, but I honestly don't care anymore. Mm. My dad has been posting about me like a madman. LOL. Thank you for those who have been sending his updates to me. It's been a little over a month since I've left from the psych ward. It was honestly the most miserable experience of my life. 
My dad called the police because he was worried for my safety. Maybe I shouldn't have freaked out, but what he did was just too much. We got into a fight about what we should do with my grandmother on my father's side, who has been sick rapidly. I don't want to put her in a home because I know how terrible those places can be, and I don't want her to go through that. And of course, because my dad can't have a normal adult civilized conversation, he starts throwing a tantrum talking about how the family is better off without me, especially since I'm only stressing people out. I stupidly lowered myself to his level. I started to yell back. I let myself go absolutely insane. I stormed up to my room like a teenager and I shaved my head. I don't know why, but I just did it. My dad called the police because he was scared and I felt bad for scaring him. The cops were definitely really nice and we got to talk, but they told me that I should probably go to the psych ward because they were worried I was going to harm myself. And when I came back, the house was a mess. The cat's litter box wasn't cleaned in what seemed like weeks. The kids were missing school and therefore behind. And my cousin left diapers and baby formula and it was everywhere. I have really bad OCD and I hate mess. I almost got on my motorcycle and I drove away to Texas or something. After I finished cleaning, I was trying to calmly tell everyone how we can all work together to keep a clean house. My father took this as me telling him that he's a bad father. And of course, we got into another fight. I understand getting overwhelmed because it's a lot. There is a lot of kids, a lot of different schedules, and two new babies in the house. It's all overwhelming, but guess what I did? I made a schedule. I planned. I figured it out. I wake up at 5 in the morning every single day to get lunch boxes ready, pre-make dinner, email teachers, clean, walk the dogs, and clean the litter box. I figured it out. I planned. Was it easy? No, but that's what you do. And for him to say that his system is making the kids happier and for them to agree, I was done. I gave up college scholarships. I lost a relationship. I only have one friend left because I couldn't keep bounds. I gave up job opportunities. I gave up my entire life. And for what? I get it. I'm not fun. I do tend to push the kids to stay on top of their schoolwork, chores, and health. I know it's pretty... Uh, lame and I know it's stupid but mm -hmm. I won't do laundry I won't do the cleaning of a mess I didn't make I won't do grocery shopping for the family I'm done if they want their dad to be in charge that's fine by me but I feel like they're starting to notice how much I actually did a few days ago while I was in the bath one of my brothers came in and asked me to do his laundry I said no and it really hurt me but I said no after maybe 20 minutes, he comes and he says, dad doesn't know how to work the laundry machine. And I simply shrugged. My life has been getting a little better. I don't feel as tired and burnt out. I'm making friends. I'm going out and I got a promotion at my job. I almost did clean though. The other day I saw my cousin's room, a mess with diapers and garbage everywhere, but I stopped myself. I'm working on saying no, homework for my therapist, and I think I'm doing pretty well. For example, my dad was overwhelmed because he forgot to go grocery shopping. He told my cousin that he'd babysit so she can go on a job interview, and my younger siblings needed someone to help with their homework. My dad dropped the babies at my work, and my old habits creeped in, and I almost left work to babysit, but instead, I tracked down my cousin and I left the twins with her. I know sooner or later my dad is going to drop the ball, and I'll have to step up again, but I'm enjoying this break. I'm sorry if this doesn't make any sense or if it's too long, but it just felt good to give my side. Again, lol. That's and then there's good. like a top comment and stuff, but he definitely explained what I was thinking earlier about like him being more strict with the kids, but like giving them that structure. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't don't think that it's lame. That's that's, that's good not parenting. Lame. That's exactly what good parenting. You are doing is. what you need to do, but I totally agree with you. Take this time to recharge yourself. Do what you need to do for you. And then, like, if you do have to step up again, you know, hopefully it won't be it'll still be strenuous, but at least you'll be full within yourself because you've been doing stuff for yourself. And, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say about the dad. I said all I needed to say about him. <laughs> I was going to say if there is a point where um, the son has to step up again. I think the the next big plan of action is to start delegating. Mm. Um, you know, you've taken this pressure on for so long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have thirteen year olds in there that don't know how to work a, a laundry machine. Laundry machine, right? They they can start learning too. They can start learning to cook. You can start giving them those life skills now. 
Mm-hmm. So it's not all on you anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. My mom and I was doing laundry when we were like eight, nine. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I was like ironing like at like yeah. eight. Like I, it's crazy because when you're little, you kind of like chores. Yeah. Like, yeah. I like to bathe. Like, oh yeah, I'm helping mom. Except yeah. laundry. Yeah. When we went to the laundromat, that was when our mom was mad. Like for whatever reason, she'd just be mad. I know it's just <laughs> from pressures and stuff from life, but we just know when we go to the laundromat, mom's gonna be mad, and we hate going to the laundromat. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's good. I think uh, oh, I was gonna. I hope that um, the ones, the, the the other kids who maybe, whether it was the dad saying or if they really felt it, if they really did feel like they were better off with their dad. Hopefully, with this change of what's been happening lately, that they can learn to appreciate their brother if that is actually what happened and not just something the dad said to make the son feel bad. Well, I think it's probably like what Jazz said. The dad's just easier or being quote unquote. They're like, woo, we don't have to clean strict. candy. And so, yeah, it seems blah, blah, blah. Fun. Probably We're, getting them drunk, for, junk, not drunk, excuse me, <laughs> junk from the grocery <laughs> store and stuff like that. Like, you know, kids like that. Yeah. Like, I remember when I was a kid and it was like, what candy if I lived breakfast. in a world with no rules? Because yeah. my parents were so strict. <laughs> I'm running away. <laughs> Literally <laughs> walk down the street yeah. and come back. Like, I mean, yeah, it's natural for kids to be like, wow, this is awesome. But then also it's concerning that the dad didn't know how to work the laundry machine because they've just been wearing dirty clothes since he's been in, since Nick has been Who's in the cycle. watching unless the girlfriend's been doing it? Ho- I hope the girlfriend's been doing it because otherwise these but they kids have just been, going been to school. Like they, doing like the this, sniff yeah. test on their clothes. <laughs> this seems good. I wonder if it's been the, a mixture of like the willful ignorance though, like of the dad trying to pawn some more it. responsibilities back on the son. Yeah. Being it's like, not oh, my I don't fault. Know how to I don't know it. how to do it. Look it up. Do you have, do you have a phone? Does any of your kids have a phone? Look Literally. it up on Google. Even though at the Airbnb, the washer and dryer, I was like, it's got so many buttons, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what mode I'm trying to do. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting a little confused, but no one else. But okay, you cool. figured it out. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it takes What's five that minutes. Look? It takes five minutes to be like, <laughs> and if somebody can help did you, you figure it did out? you figure it out, Sam? Things seems cleaner when I did it. So, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, why are half of our things are just like striped everywhere? <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I did figure it out. Top comment. I'm so sorry for everything you've gone through. It's great you're taking steps to prioritize yourself and especially your mental health. But I'm so curious. Why don't you tell your dad to leave? Those in your home who choose to go with him can do so. That's their choice. But seriously, your dad continues to be nothing but unhelpful to you mentally, emotionally, and physically. So why is he still there? Mm. And OP responded, I don't want to kick him out because honestly, for a lot of different legal reasons, I don't want to get into right now, but he does have the right to see his kids. And if I keep him out, he could use that against me to say that I'm keeping him away from his kids. I'm sorry if it isn't well explained. Also, I don't want the kids to leave their only home they know. I want to leave myself, but I feel conflicted because it's my house. My grandmother did leave me one of her properties and all of her money, but I'm thinking of giving it to my cousin. I haven't made a decision yet. Don't then, do that. Do, yeah, somebody said, do not let your cousin have it. Believe it or not, you deserve a life and a future of your own. Move to the property you were left and use the money for college or trade school. Let someone else figure out their own lives for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. Because don't keep allowing people opportunities to disappoint you because that adds to your emotional trauma and you just don't do that take care of yourself you truly deserve it and you know all the good things that you get you deserve you don't have to feel like it's selfish or that you should be giving it to somebody else you deserve these things and you're you're worthy of these things so please let let other people figure it out like they said they they're adult they're they're capable of making decisions just like you have made good decisions it's whether they make the decisions or not that's on them you can't take responsibility for that all your life because the one thing that i do the one thing that i do think about though is either you said it jazz or sam said it and it was something along the lines of like 
you have that, you feel that responsibility to like take care of your, your younger siblings because of like where they might end up and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I guess technically if their dad is there, then maybe it might make it a little easier for you to separate yourself. But I, I can understand the reason why it might be hard for OP to leave is feeling like at the end of the day, you know, he knows, like he said, my father will fail. It's already proven that he it's will. going to happen yeah. probably very soon. He's like, I'm just taking a break. And so like giving up that, that, um, protective spirit that he has over his siblings to be like, listen, I know dad wasn't there for me, but I learned to take care of myself and I know how to take care of you guys so that you guys don't have to go through what I go through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, it's difficult no matter either way, I guess, whether they choose to leave, like some of the commenters are suggesting or they choose to stay and like, like I think OP even mentioned kind of giving up their own life mm -hmm. to make sure others are good. Mm -hmm. But it's not selfish to not want that either, OP. Right. You know? So. Mm -hmm. And I just realized I do have a friend who went through this, pretty much this exact same situation where her her dad is not mm -hmm. in the picture. He's just living his own life in another family. And her mom was just in and out. Mm -hmm. So she was taking care of her younger brother from like, I think I met her around like, 1920 and he's younger and she was just like he was with her the whole time mm -hmm. and their mom was just selfish in ways where she would come back and be like expect something or need something and had no disregard for her kids and mm -hmm. she would see my friend as like basically like an equal like what's your job to take care of your brother like it's not <laughs> my mm -hmm. kind of thing and then get mad when there's no relationship between them like why doesn't he want to talk to me or things <laughs> like that and i know it's hard for my friend because it messed with their relationship of being brother and sister mm -hmm. like he would see her for things that he would normally see his mom for and it messed with their relationship We're like i just want to be your brother i just want to be your sister and they would have issues because he only saw her as a mother figure. That's the only person who's been there for him consistently mm -hmm. throughout his life. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it's just, it sucks that it has to happen, but I'm like, I know it happens, unfortunately, a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're finally, from the mom standpoint, like that's a whole other thing. Like that's just like years of things you have to try to fix. But from their standpoint, like at least we can start our lives and get something going for ourselves that we're not we can have actually have a good relationship and we're like learning from that stuff. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. whole story, the, the dad kind of reminds me of, um, and it, if it was a more serious thing, uh, like shameless Frank, Frank Gallagher. They say that in the comments, actually. He is. It's exactly. Very Frank, Frank Gallagher. Gallagher code, even shameless. Though I've never seen yeah. it either. Yeah. Oh yeah. Y'all gotta watch. Cause that's literally him. But it's like Frank Gallagher and maybe this guy is Frank Gallagher definitely is a narcissist and narcissists can be charming in a way that they appear like they're like liked by people, but they're all, they're only care about themselves. And Frank only cared about himself throughout the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And Fiona had to take care of the entire family, all the kids, all his kids. It's exactly this, but shameless is like played for kind of comedy. But when yeah. you look at what the situation is, they're like, this, this is the base sucks. root of it. Yeah. This is awful. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's this story with a bunch of parts. It's going to be uploaded in the next uh, probably like week, week and a half. So hopefully we have all the updates by the time it's uploaded, but I will make sure to check before when I'm up, up editing it. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't think of the word when I'm editing it just to make sure we have all the updates because um, these people are staying on top of it. There can't be more. Please, please. please. Um, Everybody needs to put their phones down and take care of yourself like at this point. Um, but yeah, Daz, thanks for thanks, giving your two cents. I'm of sorry course. that the story was crazy enough where you're like, you know what? I'm not saying anything anymore. No, that's okay. I, I'm I know how to protect my peace. <laughs> it's okay. And Husker, thank you for being here and only barking a little bit. Yay, Yay Husker, Husker, Husker boy. Go upstairs Yay, Husker. and if you have to the go potty, you can go potty. Yeah. Well, we'll see you guys next time on the Cover Level Podcast. The Cover Level Pod. 
Bye. Bye. Bye.